that I have run across enough irregularities. I thought it warranted some documentation general interest. First I should point out, which I believe I neglected earlier, this book was sewn on cord. Very typical. Recessed cord at that. You can see the cord uh, freed of is in fact recessed. Holes were sawn across the back of the book, the kerf of which was sufficient to allow, in this case a very thin piece of twisted mm, fiber in the form of a cord, to be drawn into the kerf with nothing on the surface apparent. In other words, it was drawn in and the cord becomes flush with the back of the book. Called a recessed cord as opposed to a raised cord. That's another story. At any rate, in this case, the cord acts as a tie-in. When you sew one signature to the other, to the other, there we have a an instance where cord was, one piece of cord was tied to the next. Books were sewn with a finite piece of uh, thread for obvious reasons, and when one got to the end of a usable length of thread, you need to tie it into the next. I'll cover that uh, in the next segment when we go to re, uh, sew this book. However, for the time being, it is sufficient to say this is a typical thread pattern for a recessed cord sewn book. You see there are three Uh, the top and bottom holes are called uh, kettle stitches, or kettle stitch holes. They are for the entry and exit of the needle. The actual holes themselves are of such degree as to permit this light cord to be drawn completely in to the recesses. So when the book is closed and flat, there is nothing protruding. That is called recess cord. I do not personally advise or actually do cord at all, whether recessed or raised. I believe tape, cloth tape, is a much easier and substantial uh, long-lasting way of sewing a book together. One of the things I wanted to show you, when a book is sewn together and then backed, it is rounded with hammer blows. You press the text block together and then use glancing blows and again we'll see that later when we come to back reback this book you spread the 
spine edge of each signature with glancing body blows from the hammer. Starting from the center and working out so that you spread the swell of the spine. It has a swell because of the added thickness of the thread. You spread the swell of the spine around and they're called shoulders, uh, the excess, which works out perfectly for the overall design of a book. The boards then take up the extra thickness created by the shoulder and in the end you have a board which fits perfectly ideally, with the thickness of the swell of the spine. That being said, one of the problems of doing that is the next thing you do is put, uh, coat the uh, spine, the rounded, newly rounded spine, with adhesive. Since there are occasional gaps, uh, depending on how well the book was rounded, you get occasional gaps. When you're applying the adhesive, these gaps allow for the intrusion of excess adhesive. Here is a case in point, right here. As you're disbinding, the adhesive per se is not a problem, but it has to be removed. One of the easier ways of removing it is as you come to a fresh, you've just removed one signature, you come to a fresh signature still bound in, take your, again, pellet knife, your single bevel knife, and this is the easiest and quickest way of removing any adhesive that has seeped through and becomes an issue. Every surface has to be relatively clean. You are not dotting every I, you are not crossing every T in practical book restoration. You do cut corners on occasion. This is one corner you do not cut, in my opinion. You make sure every surface is clean before any adhesive, any new adhesive, is applied. That is the only way you're assured of maximum longevity. Again, rule of thumb, think about what you're gluing to what, or pasting to what. If I were to leave that little residue of adhesive there and put new adhesive on top of it, I would not be adhering whatever to paper. I would be adhering whatever to the old residue. The old residue has a very limited, uh, given its age uh, and uh, the already present wear and tear. Uh, it has uh, very limited longevity, which compromises your efforts to adhere whatever to it. So, clean surfaces are pretty important. That looks like a clean and more or less stable signature. Another benefit, by the way, of checking uh, for uh, substance in your uh, outer fold is any uh, residual adhesive will show up as a shadow along this area. So you can 
see if you've missed anything of any importance. As it is, that's good to go. We will sew that without any further attention. Here's another way. This all depends on the nature and state of the original adhesive. Another way of cleaning it. Before you look for the center of this next signature, there's the center. There are the loops of thread, the exposed thread. Insinuate a very thin blade and carefully just snip. And snip. And look for the signature mark, in this case, H which is, whatever, eight or nine equivalent. Lift and separate. The way I lift it, by the way, I'll do this one more time to illustrate. The way I lift it was not just to pull. I have a firm grip on the first page, the outer page, piece of residual adhesive, by the way, and we carefully dry strip that away. I have a firm grip on the first page. I put my thumb firmly on the last page, and in such a way that when I pull back, it is going to maximize stress at the very point of adhesion. Not at the front, not at the back, but at the very point of adhesion. That gives you your best chance, no guarantees, but generally speaking, that will give you your best chance of a clean break. I'll do it one more time. First, we'll just how much of this old stuff we can get away, and that's good. We go to the center, look for the exposed thread, there it is. There's another uh, place where the last length of thread was joined to the next length of thread. That's very common in uh, any hands-on book. You'll see me doing it when it comes time to sew this uh, particular item. You can only work with a certain length of thread. It varies, of course, with uh, individuals and items, but you can only practically work with a finite length of thread. So periodically, in the course of sewing a book, you will need to join one end with the new end to continue on with the sewing in an unbroken uh, thread. Uh, we'll get into how do you do that conveniently uh, a little later. So, there is the thread and this is ready for attachment. There is your signature mark. There's no doubt in my mind. This is the last page of this signature. There's proof. This is the first page. So, grasp with these fingers firmly the last page and then I like to bend in the last page. Hold it firmly with my thumb and when I pull back, I am putting maximum stress on this last page. That tends to find the weakest point along this fold and break it free of the old adhesive. 
then you run your fingers along, make sure it's all nice and clean. There's a little bit. And that is a nice clean signature ready for re-sewing. No problem. Here you see residual adhe adhesive. That has to be cleaned off. That's not just going to fleck off. That's a little much. So, we again use a, a um, shall we say, a glancing stroke with a pairing action. Very similar to using a plane on a block of wood. Same technique. This is single bevel. I'm using the flat side along the paper, using the bevel side to catch the edge of the adhesive and lift it off. And since it's very brittle, it should be very straightforward to clean it off. There's a clean edge. Again, we go to the center, find the exposed thread. Cut the loops, look for the next signature mark, in this case K, make sure it's all nice and clean and break it free, clean off any remaining adhesive, and there again is a nice clean signature ready for resewing and it's as simple as that you simply exercise patience take it one signature at a time and continue through